Hello and welcome to another episode of Lockzone Explained, the video format for all tech enthusiasts, Lockzone partners and those looking to become automation installers. Today, we're covering the topic of multi-site user administration. And since Lockzone Config version 12.1, we have an awesome feature called Trust, exactly for that purpose. With the help of Trust, the joint handling of users, the respective login data, and the respective access authorizations is made possible across different mini-servers. And all that while being completely location independent and, of course, TLS encrypted. For data exchange via the internet, the free remote connect service as well as the locks on cloud DNS are supported. To make use of the trust function, a second generation mini-server is required due to the encryption method. But now, let's take a look at a concrete example before we get into the Loxone config and build a trust network step by step. Our Loxone headquarters, also called Basecamp, is located in Kolaschlag, Upper Austria. Of course, there are also several subsidiaries in other countries, in addition to the Basecamp. It is very important for us that our employees, for example from China, the USA or Switzerland, can enter the building with the appropriate user rights and also have access to the Loxone app when visiting the headquarters. In a trust network, there is always one so-called trust manager, and one or more participants. In this application example, the mini server in the USA would be the trust manager and Basecamp the participant. With this function, you as a Loxone partner can respond individually to the needs of your customers and implement a cross-location user management easily and cost-effectively. But now, let's look at everything in the Loxone config. Wait, sorry for interrupting. I just wanted to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll never miss another episode of Loxone Explained. Now, we can switch to the Loxone config. The first thing I'll do is connect to the mini server that will act as the manager in this trust. To be consistent with our example, the mini server in the US will be the manager. This mini server is where the trust and its participants are managed. In the peripherals tree, first click trust and then click create trust. Next, add a mini server to the trust as a participant. To do this, simply click on add new participant in the menu bar. In the properties of the created participant, you'll now enter its serial number. Since the participant has not yet joined the trust, its name is also not known yet. In this way, it's very easy to add further participants to the created trust. Next, a trust key must be generated to allow the participants to join. To do this, simply click on Generate Trust Key in the menu bar. This will create a file, which must then be saved. You can now send this file, for example, by email to the administrator of the participant miniserver, so that he can join the created trust. Before we can switch to our trust participant, the configuration has to be saved in the mini server. Now, let's connect to the trust participant, which in my example is the Basecamp mini server. And this mini server has yet to join the trust. So to do this, click on trust in the peripherals tree and then on join trust and open the file you created earlier. Afterwards, the connection is checked and the mini server joins the trust. Finally, this program as well must be saved into the mini server. That way, Additional mini-servers can be added to the trust if they are created on the trust manager beforehand. Now, participants joining the trust send information such as their name to the manager mini-server for data exchange. Therefore, to complete the setup, it is necessary to load that configuration once from the manager mini-server, so that the information about the joint mini-server is included in the document. And after that, the participants and their names will be correctly displayed on the manager mini-server and the trust will be ready for use. Now, of course, you still have to adjust the respective user management to the needs of your customers. I'll now create 10 users and import them with the help of the CSV import feature. Then, I create a new user group named Employees and assign them the permission to access the Loxone app and change their own password. Now I assign the previously imported users to the user group. Now, I want to use this user also in Basecamp which in this case is the trust participant. And to do this, I switch the mini server and click on the item Manage Trust Users and Groups. In this dialog window, you can now either add individual users or, as in my case, the user group employees. If I add a user group, of course the members of this group will be added as well. The users are transferred along with stored passwords and assigned authentications such as NFC tags and codes. However, the permissions of the users and user groups are not transferred, since these are bound to the mini server from which the users originate. Therefore, permissions must still be assigned to the newly added users or groups. 
These are mainly permissions to access the visualization and the authorization for the desired function blocks to allow users or groups to enter the building. Finally, the program must be saved into the mini server. I can imagine that the following question is all you're thinking about right now. And yes, I can confirm that if a user of trust now changes his password, for example, in the Lockzone app, this is updated across all mini servers. And here it comes. Users of a trust can be added, removed, and managed in the Lockzone app using the same principle. This is designed to be so simple that self-administration by a company's HR department, for example, is easily doable. The function is suitable from the overall user management of a weekend cottage to the management of dozens of branches of a company with several thousands of users in the Lockzone app. If you like this video, we are happy about a thumbs up. And if there are still open questions about cross-site user management, please post them in the comments. Thank you and see you next time.